Hey guys, just a quickie for today. Uh, a couple of bits of news. Um, this one's a bit belated. December 15th, Posa 13.2 release. And um, you'll see down here that they say, barring any necessary service releases, this version likely marks the last version of 13 as the team turns their sights towards version 14 in the new year. Um, so, as you recall, um, Bondware said that they're following this development methodology called Agile, where rather than releasing a full product, they release a half product, but you pay full price, and then they fix it all later. Um, and there are some improvements here. Oh, well, I'm being a bit unfair. I mean, they they released a half product and then add the features later that they should have done in the full version. So you basically pay up front for a full version and then they give you the version you paid for sometime before the next version. So basically, you take all the risk and they get all the money. But um, looking in here, there's a whole bunch of improvements that they say. But if you look... 99% of them are not improvements, they're bug fixes. So um, so they've done a mild improvement in um, the material room. Uh, they've added keyword, keyword recognition um, in textures. I'm not going to go through all of this, um, but, you know, fixed, fixed, fixed. Added a preset, so that's a nice little feature. There was one tiny little thing that I saw that I quite liked, if I can remember what it was. Um, and I probably can't now. <laughs> this, for example, I mean, uh, it's severe slowdown when reloading, that's, that's not a new feature. That's not an agile feature. That's a fix of something that should have been right in the first place. Um, Area render after full render no no longer causes full render to be deleted from the render cache. I was hoping that they had finally gotten around to um, fixing or adding uh, area render to uh, post effects, but that has not been added. Uh, if you do an area render, it doesn't add post effects, and nor can you annoyingly click on the post effects button to add it afterwards. Version 13, I quite liked. It wasn't stellar, but the really important thing that I'm interested in, they've got a sale on here, but they've announced version 14. And I have concerns about this. Um, version 13 had no slam dunk features. You know, it wasn't like Daz where they had um, a really good cloth system added or they, uh, well, Again, I'm being a bit unfair because they have they are improving the cloth system, but um, you know they had a particle system I think added and uh, a bunch of uh, big headline stuff, and I just don't see anything here. I've often thought that uh, Bondware's marketing department are clueless, and yet again they're confirming it for me. So here we go. It says the dev team has identified the following focus areas for Poser 14. Well. Personally, I think this should be not the dev team, but it should be the um, the people who are still using it should identify what they want. But I, I guess the dev team are the ones who who um, who decide what they're going to work on. So just going through this, um, I, I don't even understand all of these, but but um, replacing venerable CG shaders with GS GLSL shaders for Poser Preview. So CG, I don't know if it means something other than computer graphics, GLSLs, open GL shader language, and I thought that Poser had that for a long time. Um, personally, I don't have a massive problem with the Poser preview, except to say that the lights, light preview sucks a bit. And um, I think it was Nerd Nerd 3 d who said that uh, the light limitation is down to OpenGL. So if they're just updating the OpenGL shaders, I, I'm not seeing how that's really going to fix that problem. However, what they could do that would be absolutely game changing, uh, this would almost be a headline feature if it, if it worked, um, is if they added full preview for Superfly and... Um, is it uh, what's the other one? I can't remember now. Poser surface node, something a like physical surface node. Um, so if they added uh, shader preview for those, 
rather than fixing things that are, you know, decades old, um, that would be game changing. Now, here's where I think their marketing team need to be fired. They're adding a subscription option in addition to perpetual licenses. This is not something that should be a second feature. Poser doesn't have thousands of people who would buy it if only they could find a more convenient way to pay for it. There are thousands of people who have left it because it's commercial, but there aren't lots of people who are just desperate to come back, but they would prefer to pay monthly. This, you know, subscription option is just a, is just a way of saying you never fully own the product. Um, basically, you pay them each month, but you, you you know it's not like a mortgage where you pay and eventually you own the house. It's um it's like a higher purchase where you pay but you never get the thing that you you hired. Uh, the second you stop paying, you lose it. Um, so this is let's say ill considered at best. Revisiting cost simulation library um and user interface um. You know, I'm not sure that revisiting things that they've already done, and they're also revisiting Lip Sync Library. I'm not sure that revisiting things that they've already done is is really the way to go forwards. I, I mean, obviously, we want things that are already in there to be as good as possible. And if they were going to revisit anything, it should have been the hair room. Um, but the cost simulation library, there is some potential there. I would like much better choreographing of cloth so that uh, you can you can have better start conditions and drapes and things like that. So that just so that you can do more with it. So that has some potential. We'll have to wait and see what they do with that. Um, revisiting lip sync library again. I'm not sure who was desperate for this. Um, I don't really see a lot. Well, I, I mean, I can't honestly say that I see any Poser lip sync content out there. Um, the trouble is that Poser native content is so outdated now that lip, doing lip sync, you know, you're not going to use it in advertising or stuff like that because um, because it's just so it looks like a bad, you know, 2010 video game. So. I think what they need to do is sort their figures out. And I'm going to talk in another video about the major shortfalls of um, La Femme and La Homme and why they just have not really competed with the DAS figures. But anyway, um, tessellation for better morph and weight copy. I must admit that I have no idea what that is. Um, I mean, tessellation is subdivision, but I, I don't know maybe this just enables you to have a, a, a finer copy of morphs. I, I, I don't know. I'm just guessing. Incremental steps towards Unimesh. So um, Unimesh was promised for the previous version, um, Poser 13, well, the current version, I guess, um, and um, is still, you know, incremental steps. We don't want incremental steps. Do it or don't do it, you know. Um, it, it's long, 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 long overdue. And, um, you know, this is like feeding a uh, starving man popcorn you know or tiny morsels stop drip feeding people when they're starving they, they need a feast you know um so you know and then smaller features and bug fixes well as somebody in the forums pointed out um smaller features included last time a really significant improve to the hierarchy window but bug fixes bug fixes are not something for a new version bug fixes are what should have been done with the previous version so uh, you know uh really trying to sell that as a feature and trying to sell subscription as a feature it just looks to me as if they're awfully short of new ideas and and what bondware needs to do to justify development is get new people back in slightly enhancing what's already there that wasn't enough to keep people in the first place is not going to do it they need headline features you know i mean personally i think that if they did um uh, Genesis support, or if they did uh, particle uh, particle uh, support or liquids, they would be headline features. Um, even better bullet physics would be great, um, which I know is is a, a revisit of something that's already there. Um, I, I just, yeah, they they need to be much more creative. This is not going to sell the program to anyone, I don't think. Um, 
with the possible exception of this and and based on past experience i uh i'm afraid i've learned to contain my expectations and wait until we see what we get so i don't know uh this is severely underwhelming last time they got away with giving away a lot of content um i don't think that trick is gonna is gonna fly twice but uh we'll see where they go with this so anyway guys you take care what's your opinion of this do you think that this is promising or do you see it as i do just very underwhelming and and really just the minimum effort to keep it alive one interesting thing before we go of course that this is uh currently nine months from maybe 10 from when poser 13 was released and given that poser previously had anything from a two to three year development uh, development cycle uh possibly an annual or an 18 month release cycle would be good but not if all you're just doing is release, releasing stuff that should really have been a point cycle release you know um slight updates s- fixing things that are years old i don't see that as as a version release i see that as a point release myself but maybe they'll surprise me and um i very much hope so uh please give me your opinions if you know why this tessellation is important or exactly what this um glsl shader preview thing is going to be about then let me know uh otherwise you guys have a great week and i'll speak to you soon